Hey everybody, I'm Karen Bryan for MA Heat talking with Raging Al Iaquinta who finally, thank God, uh, is going to be getting back in the octagon at UFC Nashville taking on uh, Diego Sanchez. There's so much to talk to you, Al, but uh, one of the things I want to get to first and foremost, how good does it feel for you? You've been away for two years. How good does it feel to finally have a fight again? Yeah, no, it feels good. It's uh, it's like a feeling I haven't felt in a while, you know, mm-hmm. that, that, that right now the week uh, before I leave is – you know, really the strictest my diet is. It's the, uh, you know, kind of toning down the training a little bit, getting that last little bit in, but not trying to, you know, trying to keep it. So it's it's it's, uh, it's like deja vu. It's good. I like it. So you how know? close were you to, to not fighting? I mean, there, I feel like there's a lot to catch up on here. Um, it feels like there was a an injury and contract negotiations that were really kind of stalling things out, yeah? Yeah, there was, it was a lot. I was going through a lot. Um and it's just the time the time wasn't right for me to fight. Uh, I had a lot of things I had to take care of. The money wasn't right. The money still isn't great. And it's still, I mean, it's still the same. It is what it is. But, um, you know, hopefully hopefully that'll change at some point. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, this is what I love to do. So to be, to be able to uh, make it back um, after what I've been through is, is really just a feat in itself. So I'm just happy that I'm, I'm here and I'm going to be getting back in there. Nice. Well, the thing is, too, is, you know, you the last time we saw you, you you fought Jorge Masvidal and you're on quite a win streak there. So um, was Masvidal actually the last fight on that contract? And is that is that what was happening? No, no, I have I still have three more fights oh, okay. on that contract. OK, yeah, yeah. Um, um, you know, fight at Madison Square Garden. I I don't know. I think I should have been should have been paid a little more if i'm going to fight in uh where I, in nashville tennessee i'd still i think I, co-main event it, you know it's pretty crazy i've been out for two years i'm still the co-main event ahead of a, a lot of guys that have been fighting for a long time that have pretty big names so i you know i'm doing something right and uh you know unfortunately the the money isn't show doesn't show that um you know i, I think i go in there and uh you Dana White's never left a, a fight and and said the the flight home is the best part of his flight. You know when he watches my you know when he watches my fights he doesn't say that. Right. Um, so you know, I think I should be paid a little something because I bring it every time. You know, uh, there's some guys in the UFC that you know they might look pretty but they don't bring it. They don't fight. Right. You know, and they're getting paid. So what the hell is that about? You know, but I can only do my part and that's that's it. Well, I mean, that's why I feel like your absence was really felt. I mean, that was the whole thing because you would throw down. You would throw down with Joe Lozon. You'd throw down with Ross Peterson. You'd throw down with Jorge Masvidal. Um, yeah. yeah, and I feel like the, not that not that there's too many people trying to score points right now, but, but yeah, I feel like you are a, a different breed, and that's why the fact that they put you in there with Diego Sanchez was like, oh, sweet Jesus, like this is perfect. You guys are perfect for each other. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh... – Everyone thinks that you know that, but I don't think it's going to be that kind of fight. No. I really don't. No, I think uh, you know. I think technically, I'm just on another level than him. I think uh, I'm just too smart. I'm. I really trained to be smart this fight. You know, he gets hit and he tries to lull you into that uh, you know slugfest nonsense fight. Gilbert Melendez, he enjoys that kind of fight, and he was picking apart Diego in that fight. And the only the only reason Diego got back into that fight is because uh, you know he dragged him in. No one really talks about Miles Jury. Miles Jury absolutely dismantled Diego Sanchez, uh, picked him apart from beginning to end, um, and he kept his cool the whole time. He didn't, you know, Diego tried to lure him into that kind of fight. And he's just he's not that he, he's not a technical fighter. He tr- he can't win a fight like that. Um, and that's the kind of fight I bring, you know. I'm I'm gonna be uh, cool, calm, and collected, just like the rest of my fights. Um, you know, the 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 only way he, you know, if he can, t- he tries to take. I see him trying to take me down. He he's, he fails on one or two attempts, and uh, you know, he's just he's on his feet with, uh, you know, he's got, you know, it's just not, not. I don't see it being a good night for him. I see, yeah, you know, obviously he's dangerous. He yeah. can he can take a punch from any, you know, but but. Uh, no, it's it's this is gonna be my fight. So, how much of that time was there in that two years um, that maybe you took a break from training? Did you ever stop, or was were you still always there? I mean, obviously, I know you had an injury to deal with too, but did you did you ever stop? Not really. No, I uh, I was training right up until I had surgery, mm-hmm. 
Um, I had the surgery and I was insane. I was literally crazy. My diet was perfect. Mm-hmm. My diet's been perfect for like two years. I drink a lot of, of uh, alcohol, yeah. but, but other than that, my my diet is there's no one with a better diet than me. I I make all my meals. I uh, I meticulous with that. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, and then training. I I when I'm I was in a a thing on my leg. I I couldn't move my leg. I was doing the arm bike. I was doing that three five minute rounds. You know, just people. I was in physical therapy like with old people. You know, like old ladies. They like doing their they're like uh, doing their little mini workouts. And I'm over there like sweating, screaming like ah. But, but that you know that's what it was. I was I was training for a fight. Even then, you know, I I was. Uh, they they didn't know whether my knee was going to be good or not. You know, and uh, I just I just took every. I said I'm going to just put a hundred percent into this. Mm-hmm. And it took a really really long time for my knee to get to where where it is today. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just I'm just so thankful that I'm so thankful that uh you know there's a few people that I really that really helped me out. And uh, if I wouldn't have found them, I don't know where I, I probably wouldn't be fighting again because the surgery I had was very serious. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, to be back is it's just I'm very thankful. So they had to completely rebuild your knee. Uh, they I had a piece of torn cartilage behind my kneecap. So they they cut a big part of it out, bone and cartilage. And then they replaced it with a donor uh bone and cartilage so yeah, it's called an osteochondral allograft it's actually it's the second surgery i've had on my knee the first one was kind of was a scope a micro fracture it's kind of like a a little patch job and that held up for that was right after the ultimate fighter held up for like nine fights and it was just getting worse and worse and then i had to go in for this big one which was it was risky mm-hmm. and uh thank god it you know it turned out it turned out good Nice. Well, yeah. the, the cool thing about having time off uh, from being in the octagon is that you can heal up and your body can can heal up. But obviously, you have a great gym. You work with some of the toughest guys in the business. Um, so you don't feel like you'll have that hesitation because, you know, sometimes guys come back from an injury and they have a, a little bit of hesitation in there in the octagon. Is it really going to perform? Is it going to do what I'm asking it to do? But you feel like you've already been battle tested uh, just in your camp? Yeah, there's. I've been through – there's been maybe – through two or three times in my career where I've been out for a year plus, I broke my hand like three times in a row. I was out for a while. Uh, the the second knee, the the first knee surgery and now this one, mm-hmm. and I always come back stronger. It's it's uh it's refreshing. I, my mind is like clear. Mm-hmm. I'm like I'm looking forward to get in there. I think I fought. I mean, if you look at my my record, I fought nine times in like I don't know. It was like two and a half years. That's a lot. Yeah, it's you a know. Lot. So after a while, you get beat up, you get broke, but I still love to do it, so I just keep going. I just keep, you know, I like to have the momentum going, but I feel like sometimes I need to just chill out and relax. Yeah. And uh, these two years, it, it kind of, kind of like reset me. You know, I'm, I'm, it's, it's so weird how it happens. Like uh, the first day in the gym, it's like I'm better than I ever was. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm just, I think of all these moves, and and I'm not thinking. Sorry about that. It's all right. And, like, I'm not, popular guy. I'm not, <laughs> nah, nah. Um, and it's like I'm 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 just flowing, you know. All the all the the moves that I've been thinking about in my you know in my head, I just it, it all comes out, and uh, you know it's I'm, I'm I'm refreshed. My body's healed. I'm everything. It's uh, and now I'm I'm in like the prime of my life. I'm 29 years old. I'm going on 30. I'm like I'm at the age right now where I'm at the pro- I'm at my prime. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's no one that you know I I I can't say that. This, I've seen the same thing at, at Diego said there's very few guys at his age that can get better at at um, this sport as they get older and I, I haven't seen it out of him I've seen the last like maybe five or six fights I've seen a, a huge decline and mm-hmm. um, you know his fight with Joe Lazone was uh, was really not good for him I think you know he's he took really just I mean he was the, the way he talked after the Gilbert Melendez fight I, mm-hmm. I kind of that was that was you know that was kind of the fight where I was like ooh he might you know mm-hmm. and I think I don't know I, I think someone nice needs to have a, a, a talk with him mm-hmm. and kind of you know say listen man this is you know this is uh, but you know what do it after my after I was after just gonna my, say I, yeah I mean but that's a tough thing if you think your opponent is is getting a little punchy um you know I don't yeah and, when I get in there I won't care it's him or me that's yeah it, exactly you know? I'm, I'm going you know. He signed. He signed the contract. You know. Right. And, and yeah, I, I really, honestly, I, I didn't think 
I I didn't think he would. I mean, I guess I I knew he would take the fight, mm -hmm. but I kind of I, I don't know. I, he was asking me advice about his fight with Joe when he he was gonna fight Lazone, and he was like asking me for advice. It was kind of like he he realized that I was the you know that I was like the Better you know he was coming to me for advice you yeah. know. And he didn't he didn't really listen to me, but um, but then uh, you know I, and then he they offered me the fight. I was I was like sure I'll I'll take the fight. And yeah. He's tough though. I'll get mm -hmm. I. I I'm not sleeping on him at all. If it sounds like I am, I'm definitely not because he is he's dangerous from beginning to end. Um, even when he fought Miles Jury, right up until the end, he was on he was on the ground throwing up for arm bars and stuff. Mm -hmm. he, the guy is absolutely psychotic. He has no he's just he's so out of his mind that it benefits him. You know, if he was a little more sane, I think I think it would hurt him actually. Yeah. But he's so crazy. His self belief, the belief in himself, mm -hmm. is. Uh, it's definitely a scary thing because you, you know, he's not. You you could break guys. You can't break that guy, and that's uh, that's definitely a dangerous thing. I, I agree with you on that um, for sure. He is uh, he's one of a kind. Um, when you look at the division now, you've been out for a while. You're still in the top fifteen rankings. Uh, what do, what do you make of it now, though? Do you feel? Uh, now is a great time to make a run. Obviously, Connor's at the top. He's probably going to go fight Floyd Mayweather. You know, we have guys like Habib and Tony up there. Um, but I'm curious what you what you make of it now because you've been an observer for the last couple of years. Where do you where do you think you can fit in? And you know, if you get past Diego, how high of a guy you're going to call out? Like a number four? Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm just worried about this fight. Honestly, yeah. that I'm not going to fight anyone in the top ten for the amount of money that they're paying me. So. Exactly. I, I'll probably I, I'll, I'll we'll think about it when it comes. I just gotta worry about winning this fight, and uh, you know we'll go from there. I'm uh, it's I'm really just having fun right now. You know I'm uh, I'm in a good I'm in a good place right now. So it's I'm just worried about right like right now. You know. Well, the thing is too though you part of the reason we love you too. It is that whole raging owl thing. It's it's maybe doing trash in hotel rooms like you're not supposed to do that but that's why we love you um you boo and me like we literally on ufc now the other day we're talking about your freaking fantastic speech after the masvidal fight like that's what we love so there's a part of me that's like man i hope raging al didn't like go away and get mature and grow up like i still want that guy too you know what i mean i want you to yeah be a technical technically great fighter and improve but i want to see that guy still yeah i don't know my mom wouldn't be too happy if if I curse out the crowd again, but I mean, I hope I grow up a little bit in two years, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll see. That's I'm, like I said, I'm just having fun. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like spontaneous with stuff. So I don't know. I, 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 I kind of can't control myself when I feel something, when I feel so like it gets me in trouble a lot, but I think people respect that. Um, I'm not going to kind of just like suck up to the man and, right. Uh, you know, just take it, you know what I'm saying? So, I I mean, that's something I think I have inside of me that, that can't really change. But, you know, I just got to try to keep, stay out of trouble. You know? Well, I did hear um, that in the meantime, while you're away from fighting, you turn into a, quite the real estate agent. Is that is that true? Like that you um, are still doing that too, but you're quite, you're quite, you're quite good at it from what I hear. Uh, I'm get I'm getting, I mean, I'm, I have so much to learn. Yeah. I'm just starting to, I, the first six months was, I wanted to, I was at my, I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. It was yeah. like, it was the slow time of year. It was the holiday season, cold mm. weather. No one was really, uh, no one was really looking at houses or yeah. selling houses. It was kind of dead for me, but I do have, uh, from fighting, I have, you know, a good like sphere of influence. There's a lot of people in the gyms. I've met a lot of people through wrestling and, and, Long Island is it's a small community, so you know through me and my father coaches on on you know coaches football and mm -hmm. so between you know people just you know we, I know a lot of people and you know when they found out I was doing real estate it really it transferred over well and and a lot of people they they trust me and uh, you know it's been good the last the last couple of months have been really good I have some uh, some some deals in the works that are that are thank God gonna you know come through and hopefully I make a lot of money real soon you know that's very cool yeah one of the guys at Fox said he was on a shoot with you and you guys were driving all over and he said that you were on the phone the whole time making deals and yeah he said he was really impressed and that you sounded yeah. like you totally knew what you were doing uh yeah I'm learning I'm learning it's like anything else it's it's actually a lot like the reason I like it is it's it's cool it's it's, a, it's very similar to fighting I'm more 
constantly working on like myself, you know, mm-hmm. you, I, I'm not working for somebody doing something all day where it's like, you can become a better, a real estate agent. Uh, you still there? Did you freeze yeah, on? Yeah, I got you. Oh, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I can, uh, you know, the, the more I work, the, it's it's really just the, about the work you put in. The mm-hmm. the more the harder you work, the better you get. There's techniques to every kind of situation, every kind of sale or or, or whatever it be. Um, so it's you know I see a lot of similarities in the way, and uh, you know just from from being out there so much, I know a lot. I've I've met a lot of people that that uh, are interested in, and have faith in me. So it's good. It's awesome. a good thing for me. I, I think that's great. You know, one one thing I obviously do need to ask you about is um I'm wondering. You know, you're finishing up your camp, and Chris just had his fight with Gay Guard at UFC 210. It ended in such a a sloppy, messy way. Um, Right before I got on here with you, you know, I heard that Chris was filing the paperwork, looking for an official review and uh, looking for that to be a no contest. What what was your take on that? And and how much of, um, you know, did that did that motivate you now in your last week of camp? Was that something that maybe ended up being a little bit of a bummer distraction for you? How's it been for you? Uh, I don't think it, I don't, as far as me, it didn't really affect me that much. I mean, I feel for the guy, it's, yeah. you know, it's just the, the whole situation, just how it went down was just not, was just not right. Um, they made a call and then they kind of just switched it on him right then and there. I, it's, it's, I mean, what is it a legal knee? Is it a legal knee? I don't think anyone knows. Like what, I, I, do you have to have two hands down? Do you have to have a finger down? Are we counting how many fingers now? What, what is why are we changing rules? Like, what is the difference? And the other thing is, you're gonna. You, so you have to have two hands down to be a downed opponent. Right. So you have. So you're basically just giving him a free knee. Like you. Like if, if he has to put both of his da- hands down. Yeah. Right. For it to be an illegal knee. Right. You have to have both hands down. Yeah. So you're basically pu- putting both hands down on the mat and having trust in the guy that he's gonna just. Not knee you right in the head. Yeah, I, I, that rule doesn't make sense to me. Um, the other thing is, is like uh, you know how then then they're talking about the fingers down, the palm yeah. down. It just doesn't make sense. So the whole thing I think is uh, it, it's just a huge debacle. They should just you know. I don't know. They got to they they can't they got to overturn something. Well, it's tricky a- because yeah, with the with the hands down, then it becomes a you know, gay guard, you know, obviously they figured out that they were legal and he had, had actually lifted him up uh, uh you know, off the canvas. But again, that's a that's a like you said, it's a it's a weird rule and even if his hands are down, then sometimes I think it's at the discrepancy of the ref to say, well, Really, all the weight was in his legs anyway, and so he was just trying to, you know, touch and go. Like it's a, it, it, it is really hard, and it's hard to, to judge all that stuff right, you know, in the moment. Um, but I was yeah. just curious for you. You know Chris so well, and I know I, you know, I spoke to him before this fight. I know how badly he wanted this, and you know, it, it, it no, is it, it's heartbreaking when was, you see a guy doesn't get to, to keep fighting if he wants yeah. to keep fighting. When they were when they overturned when when they raised his hand i was like heartbroken i was like you know i was just i i fell for the guy because yeah. uh you know you it it, it changes a lot that mm-hmm. you you know he called it an illegal knee at first mm-hmm. and so you give him five minutes right. he's like, the guy's obviously hurt you know the guy got kneed in the head i think yeah. you know anyone that's anyone on the internet i saw a bunch of guy people on the internet talking that he was milking anything come over here let me knee you in the head and then we'll see whether you cry like a baby all right, right. people so um, this guy, Chris is one of the toughest guys I've ever met, yeah. you know? So the fact that, that he can, you know, they're going to tell him he's got time and then they, right then they're like, Oh, actually, wait, no, no, no. It was legal. Yeah. Can you go on? No. Yeah. Okay. It's over. Done. It's like, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, if, if your initial call is that it's a legal knee, then you just keep fighting, right. you know, put him back in the position, yeah. you know, it, you're, you're not going to. If it was a legal knee, if it was a good knee, yeah. you're not going to stop it and ask him if he's okay. What right. month is it? Right. You're not going to ask him what he month it is. Right. It doesn't matter. He's in the middle of the fight. He's not going, you know, and you keep fighting. Mm-hmm. Whether he knows what month it is or not, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. It's it's so start him in the same position and go. And if if he can if he can if he doesn't know what month it is and he can't continue, then the fight will probably end right then and there. You know, it's yeah, just it's 
it's tough too because that whole thing about you know what month is it what you know whatever um mm. i feel like for a lot of you guys like when you guys are in there you're in the zone i i know obviously a, a doctor has a, a protocol of things that they're going to ask you but i feel oh, like yeah. a lot of you guys might not know what freaking day it is <laughs> yeah no the, the the doctor's not i mean she's just she was just doing her job you right. know but right um yeah i think uh yeah i hope i hope it works out in some way for chris because mm-hmm. you know the, for the fight to end like that is just, I don't know. It's 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 not a loss. It's it's not a loss. He didn't lose the fight. He he was he would they stopped it and then they gave him a loss. You know, it's not like it's not like he lost the fight. It, it, it changes it. People don't understand when you're in there how your head how your head works. If you know how how things you know you'd say it's an illegal knee and you're like wow I got hit with an illegal right. knee. I'm gonna take my time. Take I'm gonna time, rel- right. try to get it back. And you know sometimes. When you're in there, you really you're not you you're not in the right you know you're not like fully there. You're kind of like running on instinct. You're kind of just going going with it. I've been there a few times where I'm sure if they stopped a the fight and they asked me what month it is, I wouldn't. I probably would have said a color. I would have said blue or something, you know. Right. But you get through it, and you you know that's 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 the the whole point of this is you know that's what it's all about. And uh, I know for a fact, Chris Weidman, he could be. A, you know, a second away from death, mm-hmm. and he come, he he he'd man up through it, and 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 he would, but they didn't give him the chance to, and uh, you know, I hope he gets his. If nothing, he gets a rematch, and he makes it right because he was looking great, you know, right up until the end. There, he was, he really, he was putting on the, the way he was making those takedowns mm-hmm. look effortless, and uh, you know, he was he was looking good. So yeah, you know. I thought that first round. I thought he looked tremendous in that round. Um, really strong, really fired up. I thought he looked great. Um, and yeah, for all of us, that was a fight that so many of us were looking forward to. And like, just for it to end that way, um, really did suck. But I, I've said this before. I said this on the air. I know that in his personal life, Chris has overcome a lot of adversity. So you know, that's one thing that I guess is uh, is comforting is that he's the type of guy that's not going to be broken from this. And I think that um, is something you know that that people should know. But um, but just but. Just just, it's not like Gegard wanted to win like that either. You know what I mean? It's like no, they wanted sure. to fight. They wanted to fight. Yeah, yeah. It's just an unfortunate. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It you is. know, I, I just uh, and and New York's got to get this. They got to get their act together. You know, kind of like I guess it's just going to take time. Right. I don't know. Yeah. So speaking of New York, obviously there's a a show this summer. Um, if you get past Diego, how much would you like to be on that that fight card? It's going to be out in Strong Island. That would be cool. That would be cool. Nassau Coliseum, I tell you what, that's like the place I grew. That's like Madison Square Garden. It's uh, To me, it's like cool. That's all right, you know, because right. it's the history. But I think, it, honestly, it would have been as cool for me, maybe a little more because I'm from New York. Mm-hmm. But uh, just as much as anyone else, really, from New Jersey or mm-hmm. Connecticut, whatever. But Nassau Coliseum is like I – li- I live there. You know, that's where – our gym is – you could you could – walk there it it right. take you like a 15 minute walk to walk to Nassau Coliseum from the gym I went to Nassau Community College which is right across the street yeah. I used to wait in the parking lot and uh, get uh, hockey autographs to, nice. I got I got stabbed in the hand trying to get uh, Wayne Gretzky's autograph in the parking lot of the Nassau Coliseum oh my time. god <laughs> so, uh, yeah, with a, a, a pen I got like a pen we were it was like mayhem someone got it was an accident but yeah. you know uh, that's just like so much history that right. for me there you know I used to watch the Islanders all the time I was a huge Islander fan growing up um my parents they were there for you know when the Islanders won four cups in a row right. they have picked they used to tell me all the stories so Nassau Coliseum would be cool but I ain't gonna do it for free I'll tell you that <laughs> you know you. so we'll see if I get past Diego We'll see what happens. I hear you. Well, I would think you would probably have some leverage too, being a being a hometown favorite and stuff like you that. You would think so, but we shall see. We shall see. Well, Diego Sanchez is next up for you. Um, as you know, you had a lot of momentum before. You were on quite the winning streak. Um, so, uh, looking for you to go back in there and continue what you are already doing so well. Um, just really, just like I said at the beginning, just like really psyched to have you back in the game because we missed you. Uh, it means a lot, Karen. I appreciate it. I really do. All right, it's Al. Thanks be, so much. It's going to be a good one. I'm uh, I'm ready to go. So awesome. It's gonna awesome. Going to be good. And I'll be on the air at Fox, so I'll uh, you know, we'll be talking about nice. you and everything, talking up this one. So it's going to be great. Awesome. Thank. Appreciate you. it, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. See you later. Bye bye.